there could be locked abilities, right? The, I.e., the fact that abilities aren't evenly distributed across the population, and that some people may be better at some things than others, is is still not a not a reason not to do the meritocracy. Is what I'm saying. It it just means that your pool of talent for that thing is smaller. Would you agree with that, Pharaoh? I think just just going back to that point, I'm, just, I'm trying to do it into a and d analogy so you'd understand it. Um, a, a truly open meritocratic system would allow a class to recruit from anyone, even if they were bad at it. So say, for example, um, what's a class that's not allowed for... So what's, a, what's a race that's not allowed for barbarian? Like elf, surely. Is that right? No, like a, like a halfling couldn't be a barbarian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exa yeah. exactly. But in a truly meritocratic uh, situation, um, we are just looking at, uh, you know, I, I guess, it's, okay, this is too complicated because that, <laughs> the class has implicit physical abilities, doesn't it? That has that baked in. Uh, I don't know. I've, I've, lost my, I've lost my train of thought now. Mm -hmm. all, I, all I'm saying is, is that the, the fact that abilities are locked um and and are some in some ways innate uh, i.e not the tabula rasa does not mean you you have to dispense with the idea of meritocracy uh, meritocracy it just means that your respective pools in each profession are smaller than the smaller than they would be if you considered i mean i remember boris johnson talking about he thinks that the talents are distributed evenly across the population this is obviously bullshit, right? We know that yeah. that's not the case. Yeah. Um, so in practice, every, in practice, um, despite the theory, it is going to look more like that anyway. Just like I said, the you know why is it that every massive financial firm has a team of Chinese quants? They're not Italian quants. They're not from any other place. They're specifically Chinese. Whereas if you go over into the uh, you know vice president of this, that, and the other. Uh, complex instruments, you'll see the race of that of the people who occupy those jobs will change too. Now, they okay. probably get paid just I, as much as the quants, but you you understand what I'm saying, right? Is yes, that... I, I'm, I'm finally understanding. If you were to yeah. recruit purely on technical ability, totally blind, that yeah. just by the fact that different people have different attributes it would come out in the wash anyway. So you would end up with have having all of your quants as Chinese is what you're saying. I, I, I get yeah, what you're or, saying. Or, however, or, or however, your entire however, sprinting team will be Jamaican, however, as is also the case. <laughs> yeah. However, what we're not factoring in, I, when we, we, I think with the social, when, I, when we've talked about this kind of social element, we focused heavily on uh, race, class and education, but we haven't been focusing on philosophy, politics and religion. And mm -hmm. um, and that's the un unknown factor. You're 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 right. In a meritocratic system, it would come out in the wash, and you would end up having like if you looked across different verticals, um, people would have self sorted purely based on those kind of technical bonuses. But mm -hmm. it would have been agnostic to something like um, morality, which, as I've highlighted above seeps through into the work they do while um in in a guild system which protects it which has the advantages like you said baked in because it also has a high um ability and technical ability it also protects itself from subversive philosophical and um mm -hmm. immoral characters or immoral characters let's just say by ins by ensuring that those factors are taken into consideration during the um, recruitment process. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, but, but I I I, st I still have the I still have the because I'm a realist always, Pharaoh, as you know. I still have the problem of if you're the if you're a firm who decides for whatever reason, okay, uh, I'm not going to employ. Yeah, like, let's just choose groups who who we know have good good uh, cognitive ability uh chinese uh jewish people uh indians let's say right 
I am not going to hire any of those three groups. And then the firm across the road is hiring those groups. Mm. What are you going to do when their superior talent starts out competing you in that petrol market? bomb the place? Yeah, like, like, how like, do you how do you deal with that problem? Just gl glorious isolation. That yeah, I, I think I think that I, I think that is the only th only thing you can do, isn't it? Is to accept that society is going to be poorer, but you'll still have a society that looks the same in fifty years' time. Hmm. You see, the thing I the thing I worry about though is that let's say on a national level, the country that decides to do that versus the country that decides not to do that. Fast forward a hundred years. And have they built up the resources and the army able to wipe you out? But that's where I think, in my mind, nuclear missiles change everything because that's that's all you need, surely. Hmm. This is becoming a completely different conversation from the one that I think we started with. <laughs> uh, I, I, I think it's a, I think it's a, it's worth bearing in mind though because mm. well um, I think. It, you, it, yeah, it, I, I it's, a, agree. it's a natural it's, it's advantage. A challenge. Yeah, it's a yeah, natural yeah. advantage that globalism has, though, because it's like, well, you know, you're 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 shrinking your possible talent pool versus them basically having the entire world to choose from, and it's like, well, you know, they're choosing literally from six to, six to seven billion people, whereas you, you're choosing from sixty million people or fifty million people or whatever, and you know, just by the law of averages. You know, your very brightest of the rest of the world may beat you. So, I mean, this is something. This is a, a genuine issue uh, for people, especially those people who are extremely keen on IQ. We, I, we started the stream. I reiterated why I'm not keen on IQ as a metric, but for those people who are and who are nationalists, how do you deal with this problem? I, it, it seems to me to be a very great problem because you're always going to be outcompeted by the you know the group that takes on the the chinese mathematics autist wedded to the jewish guy who can do the you know do the the front room functions uh you know wedded to whoever else you've got you probably have an irish guy there and a and a and a portuguese guy there as well you know just the best in their fields um that it that's that creates an issue for the for somebody who's gone the isolationist route but, I, but then you know, but, but then i, I, I again i, I... I think you're looking at it from the computer game perspective, and I think what we've seen in uh, in our own country, where we've in massively increased openness in terms of recruitment, especially for elites, have we made society more productive from a raw numbers perspective? Is our economy better, and um, are, are we a more moral or virtuous place? compared to somewhere like Russia, which has a cl more closed society. Mm. Um, maybe maybe in terms of GDP, you're correct, but I'm not so sure in terms of... Um, well, terms I mean, of it's, it's, difficult, it's, difficult not, it's difficult for me not to think of my father's country, which has it's somewhat gone this route, right? Mm. And what has happened? It is It is experienced brain drain, because all of the best people end up leaving, uh, like my dad, for example, or any of his family members. They've all left, and now they're engineers and lawyers. You know, their productive enterprises are going to countries like Germany and Sweden and here. Um, so it, it strikes me that liberalism, uh, in in that respect, has has actually, uh, in, just in terms of raw uh, results, has achieved has got one over on the you know nominally traditionalist model that the Mullahs are going for. I, I'm just a realist. I'm just t yeah, saying that that is the result of what's happened. Uh, again, it, it's kind of like, I think it's a longevity thing, though. It's like, how long can they sus sustain it? And if I, if I were to say which country would be in a better state in 100 years' time, just honestly, do you think Iran or Britain will be more stable and more virtuous Yeah, in 100 years from today? Yes. Now, that is a more interesting question because, of course, the strategy that Britain has gone for is not is suicidal, which is. Uh, but, but you see, it's very difficult 
to get away from the logic of the thing in the first place, though, because that that logic that I'm talking about is yeah. true as well, and it's it's probably why it's one of the supreme factors um, that is contributing to the acceleration of like European suicide. But, you know, because it's like, well, we must be able to compete, but in order to do that, you end up diluting and diluting and letting in all these outside groups and letting them organize against you in the open pretty much um and then you know before you before you know it uh you know you, you end up with the, the you know that brahman brahman class overlords uh, like like you were talking about pharaoh <laughs> so yeah i do see the problem but but i also think that one of the things that gets us there is just the raw fact that anybody who has this purely open recruitment system will have an edge on the person who reduces their talent pool it's just a fact so you know I, i'm just i'm i'm not highlighting this to be a knob or anything i'm just saying that this is a genuine <laughs> a, a genuine problem um that anybody who has to operate in reality will face mm. surely 